Have you ever wondered why dentists charge different prices for the same procedure? Nobody's really taking the time to really break this down. And that's what I'm gonna do for you today. This video is gonna be helpful for both patients and dentists because I wanna clear the air on this topic. So when talking about value and pricing, I feel like it only makes sense to reference and learn from the king, Alex Hormozzi himself. If you guys don't know who Alex Hormozzi is, you need to check him out. He's incredible, super smart guy. I highly recommend him to anybody looking to learn more about growing their business. Now, he has a lot of practical business knowledge as well. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna apply it to dentistry. So what is value? So according to Alex Hormozzi, there's a value equation. Value equals dream outcome times perceived likelihood of achievement divided by time frame times effort required. So since we're talking about dental work, let's break this down even further and relate it to procedures, okay? So dream outcome, the first component of the equation, whatever the transformation that you're trying to achieve. A filling, for example, would be eliminating the bacteria, place a filling or restoration to protect the tooth. A deep cleaning would be removing the plaque or calculus and bacteria to reduce the pocket depth. A crown, the dream outcome here would be to reinforce and protect the tooth. For clear aligners, the dream outcome is to move teeth into a healthier position. So as the dream outcome increases, so does the value. By the way, everything that was on the top of the equation, as you increase those, the value goes up. Everything on the bottom of the equation, as you decrease those, which is time and effort, the value goes up. All right, so the next part of the equation, which is the perceived likelihood of achievement. So this basically means how confident patients are in the dental professional to help them achieve the desired result. Simply put, do you think your dentist can follow through on the procedure? So a lot of this comes down to trust, right? Do you trust your dentist? Let's break down trust in ways that dentists can earn it. Dentists can use pictures of having previously done the procedure. They can show reviews. They can share stories of previous patients who have undergone similar treatment that they've done over time. They can share the education and the training that they've undergone. They can even use the number of years that they've been practicing to show experience. There's several ways to help build this trust bank. Another way is if they had just done the procedure on the patient in the past and used that experience as a marker for how good or bad it was, right? Because if a dentist has a filling on you and it was a good experience, chances are the next time you get a filling done with them, it's also going to be a good experience. That increases the perceived likelihood of achievement. And like I said, the higher the perceived likelihood of achievement, the higher the value. So a way to think about this in comparison is to think about a dentist who's done a procedure one time versus a dentist who's done the same procedure a hundred times. Which one has a higher perceived likelihood of achieving the desired result for that procedure? Probably the one who's done it a hundred times, right? Cool. Next, let's talk about time frame. Time frame in this situation would be the duration it takes to achieve the desired outcome. So basically, how fast can the procedure get done while still maintaining high quality? So the shorter the time frame, the higher the value. For example, do you want to be in the dental chair for 30 minutes or for three hours? And my next question is, would you pay more for work that can be done in 30 minutes versus the same work being done in three hours? I'm sure everyone's going with a 30 minute option, right? So when the results can be delivered in this shorter time frame, again, the value goes up. The last component of the equation is effort. How much effort does it take the patient to get the results? So let's talk about the physical discomfort, right? How long does the patient have to have their mouth open? Will the patient be sitting for a long time? These are things that require effort for the result to happen. Another thing could be adherence to post-op instructions. How many rules does the patient have to follow? Do they have to avoid a bunch of things? What can or can they not do? Is it a long list of things or is it a short list of things? Checkups. How many visits is it going to take? How many times do they have to keep coming back to the office to get the results? Is there any maintenance required? These are all the things that add to the effort bucket in this equation. And so when you decrease the effort that it takes for this result to happen, the value goes up. Let's put all this together and use a very specific example of dental crowns. And we're going to compare two different ways that the dental crown experience can be different and we'll relate it to value. Before we do that though, please subscribe to the channel if you have found this valuable. It takes a lot of time and effort for me to make these videos. And when I see the subscriber like and comment count go up, it really gets me excited and motivated to continue making these videos because it's showing that this is helping you guys in some way. And it feels really good to know that I'm helping other people. So I really appreciate it. Okay. So what are dental crowns and why might somebody need one? So dental crowns are custom made caps that are designed to fit over the tooth and protect it. Nowadays, they're usually porcelain, so they look like your tooth. There's no metal in them, usually. And this is meant to help protect damaged or decayed teeth. Let's say you've gotten a root canal and it needs to be reinforced, or maybe you have a crack in the tooth. These are very common reasons as to why someone would need a dental crown. Now, there are two ways nowadays to get dental crowns made. The first way is the traditional way, which is where the crown is made at a dental lab. So let's use the formula again. The dream outcome in this situation is to get the crown made. That's going to reinforce the tooth because of 
of the crack. Now, for the perceived likelihood of achievement, this is where there's the biggest discrepancy in prices. Private dentists can charge whatever they want, as they should, and some of them are going to have higher prices. But the reason why they do that is because a lot of these dentists have undergone extensive training to elevate the quality of care and learn cutting edge techniques that increases the patient experience and the quality of their work. And so this is justified in the perceived likelihood of achievement. Some dentists don't do these trainings, therefore they don't have a reason as to why they can charge more. This is a big thing that people misunderstand. Now, moving on to the next part of the equation, the time frame. Traditionally, when you're getting a lab made crown, it's going to be two appointments. The first visit will be about 90 minutes and the second visit will be one hour. So you're looking at two and a half hours of having to be in the office minimum. At the first visit, the doctor is cleaning out the tooth, removing any weak spots on the tooth, reshaping it so that way it's ready to get the crown. They take the records, they make it temporary, which is what you leave in, and they temporarily cement that to the tooth. The records and the mold get sent to the lab. They make it over the course of two weeks, and then the patient is to come back, and that's where they get the new crown. Now, in that two-week span is where there's a lot of effort for the patient. There's a laundry list of things that they have to avoid, things like hard food, chewy food, making sure this temporary doesn't fall off. Whenever they floss, they're not supposed to floss up and down because it could dislodge the temporary. They have to still make sure that they keep the area clean. And if the temporary crown ever falls off, they have to come back to the office to get it re-cemented. This is a lot of effort. So now that we have the equation filled out for the first scenario, we can now fill out the equation for the second scenario, which is getting a same day crown. Yes, nowadays dentists invest in machines that help them make crowns in the office. This is a game changer. And this could be a reason as to why the dentist is charging more. So let's break down the equation. Same dream outcome, right? And the perceived likelihood of achievement also is the same. But this is where the value changes. When we're dealing with the time and the effort, there's a virtually no comparison. Let's talk about the time. For an in-house crown made at the office that's made in one day, it's just two hours and one appointment. That's it. So it's one visit, two hours, and you get the crown. The effort is the same when it comes to how long you have to sit in the chair to get the treatment done. However, it's only one visit, like I said, and it's just two hours. But here's the kicker. There is no effort after you get the permanent crown because you're not in a temporary. So you don't have to worry about this falling off. You don't have to worry about avoiding food. You don't have to come back for a second visit to get the crown put on because it's done. It's already permanently cemented. So when you're directly comparing the value of a lab made crown versus a same day crown in the office, the pricing can be totally different. And this is just one reason as to why dentists may charge different prices for the same procedure. Because while the procedure is the same in the sense where you're getting a crown, the entire process leading up to how you're getting that crown is totally different for both of these situations. So you can see that getting the same day crown would be more valuable, which is why dentists can charge more for this. And again, you as a patient are paying for the experience. Dentist, you are charging for the experience. If you're providing high quality experience, you should be charging high ticket prices. If you're not really providing that great of an experience, well, you shouldn't be charging the same that the dentist who is. And patients, at the end of the day in dentistry, you're going to get what you pay for. Dentistry is a business and a lot of people don't like admitting it, but it is. So find the best fit for you. And if your value matches up to the experience you're receiving, stick with that dentist. Because at the end of the day, if the dentist's work is exceptional and they're charging accordingly, people will pay for that experience. Hope this cleared up the question as to why different dentists charge different prices for the same procedure. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.